Hey, everybody. I'm currently pushing with a different point of my voice because if I don't, I kind of sound weird. Uh, that, see, my, my voice is going. How you living? How you doing? How you feeling? How you moving? How you grooving? How you doing it? Um, so I had a busy week. Uh, last week, me and Ingber were out at Lake Tahoe for two days uh, where we got a bunch of cool interviews, which we're going to be having uh, coming out this week. Uh, we're going to have Travis Kelsey and Rob Riggle coming out later this week. And then a, a bunch of other guys. We, I caught up with Vrabel. I caught up with Case Keenum. Uh, I did see Sims. And me and Sims got to hang out for you know a few hours, uh, had some tequila, um, Fortunately, no daddy cigars. It was a it was a business trip. It was a work trip. Uh, he misses you guys. He misses the thirty three percent, and we did agree to a possible home and home. So I might go up and do his pod. He may come down and do this pod. So I don't. We don't have an official date on that. But he was he was pumped about it. Um, he's the man. He's still kicking ass and he's feeling great. Uh, so I was there for two days and then I went to Vegas. Uh, Bleacher Report had an event called the Jump Off, and I was doing for four hours. A dunk contest, three on three, and my voice got destroyed because when you're doing a dunk contest and you're going, shut it down, you're going to lose your voice. So that's what happened. Um, we are going to have Justin Pugh on today's podcast, and it's kind of perfect because the Madden ratings just came down, and that's all people are talking about. So we're going to do a lot of guess the Madden ratings with Pugh. We're going to talk about Kyler Murray and have we already seen the moments in camp that make his eyes pop? And then just kind of talk about life in the NFL. You guys have heard Pew. Pew was actually the first guest we had when this became just the Lefko show and Sims was gone. So it's good to check in with my good buddy, old friend. Um, but the real reason I'm doing an intro right now is because I want to get to the second commercial break faster so that I don't like when you guys hit me up and say, hey, that commercial hit right after you asked a question. I'm trying to get out of the way. So how about this? We're going to go to commercial and on the other side, Justin Pugh. Be right back. All right, let's go. The voice is back. We got the commercial out of the way. And Justin Pugh is in the building. Pleasure. Do you realize you were like the first guest I had post-Sims? I, I do. I, and I wanted to make a comment. The music is so you. Thank you. Before, what, what is I, me? I, I felt like I had to come in like, you, you have like a little suave about you. Yeah, you yeah, have yeah. like a little... I'm not going to gas you up too much, but like when I was here okay. with Sims, I felt like I had to wear a suit. You know, yes. we were all business. Yes. The thing with, um, and I just saw Sims this last weekend, so it's okay. How's he doing? He's good, man. He's Sims is so football all the time, and I've realized as I've done more interviews without him, I'm like, man, I like to talk about a lot of shit. So I, it's to let me kind of go in some weird directions. Yeah, well, man. He, he was talking about some different things, though. I mean, he, oh. you're, you're, you're opening him up a little bit. Well, the, the beautiful thing about Sims is he, that's his obsession, bro. Like, he eats and lives and breathes it. And so when people, like, shit on him online about not knowing football, I go, if he doesn't know football, then nobody knows football. Because no. that's all he fucking cares about. I'm also like, let's go play some blackjack, drink some tequila, get a little crazy, talk about real estate, all that stuff. Oh, so you thought what, you thought when you proposed to someone that you got a ring to? I thought maybe there's like there, there has to be some outward showing that I'm, in, I'm taking off the market. Hey, ladies. Yes. When I put my floral suit on and I'm oh. walking the red carpet. You like that? Hey, don't be taking pictures for anything else. What did you, just, what'd you, you think know, about that jacket, though? I liked it. I, I've you. done a few things. As a big guy, see, you're not as you're right. big. You're right. It's tough to pull off some of the colors. I, I kind of go with the subtle things. So my fiance, so Pew did not realize I was not, I was engaged because he didn't see a ring. My fiance agrees with you. She believes that men should have engagement rings, too. And that I should wear it so that the exact same reason women don't come up to me. She thinks it should be more official. Because when you walk out, I'm sure it's the, you have to have security escort you right to the car. It's really hard. It's uh, no, tough. the true the true thing is is that like, <laughs> I mean, I, I guess uh, unless you're looking for it, I don't know. NFL players, it must be interesting. Women just walk up to like, do you watch guys on your team and it's just nuts? Yeah, yeah, yes. I'm sure. I'm not going to say you, but I'm no. sure Odell was crazy i can only imagine what he's gone through oh yeah 
I'm sure in Cleveland it'll be a little bit different. Like I would the, imagine. The Cleveland Six isn't the same as a New York Six. I don't, yeah, I don't, well, I don't, I don't I, I've never been. So what's I'm it like in Arizona? Arizona is it's a like what's state. the party scene like in Arizona? Oh, it's 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 very different from New York, but it has the same level of craziness. Yeah, I mean, you've heard the stories of the Arizona State. That's what I've heard. And you know, I I go out to this downtown area in Old Town Scottsdale. My girlfriend didn't move out there with me yet. As soon as she gets out and goes downtown, she goes, "You're not going down there without me." <laughs> And I, I said, yes, ma'am. I just got, I got back, and I walked right back in the house. Have you killed any scorpions since the last time we talked? I've killed multiple scorpions. Nice. I go out with a black light. And my girlfriend really is the biggest murderer in the She's house. She's into it. I've killed a snake since I've seen you last, probably. Did I kill the snake when I saw you last? I, I think you did. Yes, yeah, so I've got one snake under my belt. They don't come around anymore. The scorpions, you go out with the black light and a hammer, and you take them out. All right, so I want to get right into this. Madden ratings have started coming out. Have you seen your Madden rating yet? I haven't. I want to preface this with, you know, I haven't finished the last two seasons, so I know Madden probably is coming after me a little bit. What was the highest Madden rating you've had? I don't know. I, might have, I have no idea. I think I was, I was the highest rated Giants O-lineman for a little while. So let me ask you this question. When you first got to the league, what is it like to see yourself in Madden? I don't play Madden as much anymore okay. since I got into the NFL. When I was in college, I yeah. played all the time. I was so pumped. And then when Madden starts shitting on you, you're just like, fuck those guys. So there's a lot of people saying fuck those guys right now because Madden changed their ratings a little bit. They created these tiers, elite, near elite, quality, low-level starter, backup, low-level backup. And what they did was they, they wanted the elite guys to be super elite. Like they were like, we have too many guys that are 95 and more. Yeah. So they kind of lowered a lot of people. I don't hate that. I don't. I hate think that. it makes sense because I'm a starter in the NFL, and I'm, right. I go to any team. I'm starting in the NFL, right. so I mean they can put me anywhere they want to put me. I'm probably a low level starter. As, if, if, if I'm a realist, so I'm Aaron, a realist let me just give you a perspective of the guys they dropped. Aaron Rodgers went down to a ninety, and he's a ninety nine, right? Something like that. Yeah. Alvin Kamara is furious. He's at an eighty nine. I agree with Alvin. Yeah. How the hell is Alvin Kamara an eighty nine? Give me your list of your top. Three running backs in the NFL. Well, what they I have do to is, be the elite. I want to do yours, and then I want to kind of guess because I think it's interesting. Like I, the reason that I think this is important is when I was growing up, PFF did not exist. Yes, there was no way to really know whether a certain position was good, especially a position like yours. Oh, 100%. Because there's a lot of people out there that are either going to look at a PFF or they're going to look at Madden to decide, oh, Justin Pugh's actually good. And I think it really impacts defensive players. Because at least with offense, there's fantasy guys. So, like, if you perform well in fantasy, everyone's going to know you're good. Yeah, the guys know the third string running back from the Chargers because... They know he Austin Eckler because he filled exactly. it and he was good. But a nose tackle? Like, I grew up knowing that... Patrick Sertan and Sam Madison were good corners because they were 97s in Madden. Yeah, all 100%. Like, I knew, I knew that, um, that one linebacker was better solely because of Madden. And you knew Derek Johnson from the Chiefs ran, yes. ran a 4-1 right. coming out of Texas, so you wanted him on your team. Yeah, because the speed was there. 100%. So. Guess my rating is what you want to do. What do you do? think your overall Madden rating is, Justin Pugh of the Arizona Cardinals? Well, if I'm a starter in the NFL – I have to be in the upper – I have to be – I if they didn't put me in the 70s, I got to at least be – I think I'm a low 70s guy. I, I, 72. Justin Pugh, Madden rated you a 73. Oh, my – I love him. I'm, I'm just going to buy the game. So you're happy with a 73. Well, look. You're a realist. I'm a realist. I'm not an idiot. Some of these guys – He's not calling you I'm idiots. not calling anyone names. <laughs> but some of the guys are unrealistic about who they are as a player. I know I'm one of the best guards in the NFL. Yeah. I've gotten hurt the past two years. So how can I say that when I haven't gone out there and done that? All right. So I have a few categories here that I want you to guess the categories. What do you think your awareness is? Well, based off of what I've just said, how aware I am of my situation, I better I, I at least should be in the nineties when it comes to my awareness. But I know I'm probably like an eighty six. You're a seventy nine awareness. Okay, I think I should be in the eighties. That's... This is one that's sort of really testing your manhood. What do you think you are in strength? You know what? When I went to Syracuse, they called me puny because I wasn't very strong. So whatever they gave me, I actually think is better than where I'm at. What do you think they gave you? What do you think you you are in Madden strength? Um, an 84. 
88. Okay. They put some muscles on you. Pass well, now I am. You know, now I got yeah. it. Now I'm, now I, all I do is lift. Pass blocking and run blocking. They should have made me a better pass blocker than run blocker. They did. Perfect. 73 pass block, 71 run block. Okay. And what do you think your stamina is? <laughs> Oof. Linemen are, are getting discredited here all the time. But as I should have one of the best stamina's for the offensive lineman. Yep. Um, or stamina's. Stamina's. I made it up. Doesn't matter. Word, words in. <laughs> Um, it's going to be 64. 92. Oh, really? 92 stamina. Oh, I, I, I'm thinking Madden would try to discredit us and say the receivers could run further. No. And the Alvin Kamara's of this world can just run all day. I love it. No, well, I love that because that's really where I'm at. They, I don't know who's following me around that seemed like I can go. So you kind of like these right now. It's just, I know I'm better than a 73. Like, I want to know like what the left guards are at. Who's the best left guard in the NFL? All right, let's right check now? it out. I'm going to go to position left guard. Just go to over. Can you go overall guard or no? Yes. Okay, oh, let so, me see. So Zach Martin should be. One. I can do left guard and right guard. Put them all together. Put them all together. Filter. Okay. Who? This is great. Um, and I want overall. I was organizing by throw power overall. Who's the number one guard in the NFL? Zach Martin. Correct. According Who's to Matt. the number two guard number in the two. NFL? Who is the number two guard in the it's NFL? It's a right guard. It's a right guard. Jeez. Now I'm starting to lose. Can you give me a conference? Uh, AFC. AFC. That really narrows it down. Marshall Yonda from the Baltimore He was Rams. number three. Mm. Number two is David DeCastro. David DeCastro. Yeah, great number player. Number four is Brandon Brooks. Brandon Brooks. Number five is Kevin Zeitler. Kevin Zeitler. And he's, they're all, these are all right guards. They are all right guards. So, so the number one, the number one left guard is in six, and it's Ali Marpet. Ali, my, my my agent reps him. Just got him eleven really? million dollars a year. So shout out to Ali. Played at Hobart Division Three College. Wow. So Ali, uh, I'm trying to figure out their ratings, but uh, and then you got Quentin Nelson down there, dude. You're really low on this list. Yeah, it's all right. Man. What if they go sort by money earned, like, like <laughs> if they go dollar bills? I can't do that on the Madden. Oh, okay. All right, so. I, I didn't know if they had that. Um, what do you think Kyler Murray's speed is? Your teammate, Kyler Murray. What speed? It's got to be in the 90s. I mean, because he beat, we have a kid on our team from UMass. Yes, Andy Isabella. 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 Is it Isabella? Or is, it, is it Isabella? I think it's Isabella, bro. I think it's Isabella. Andy Isabella. It's yes. Bella? It's Bella. So you've been calling your teammate by the wrong name? I, for haven't, the last? I haven't talked to him once. He's very scared. Like when he comes in, he doesn't he doesn't say a lot. Really? Every time I, he walks by, I'm like, when I was in high school and you have like the one freshman that gets called up to varsity and the jersey's too big for him. Yeah. That's what Isabella Isabella, really? That's Andy Isabella. Sorry, Andy. Well, when I had Vic in here, we were talking about like his first day in prison, uh, which is somewhat How'd that go? He was. He just said he got brought in during lunch, which was the worst time because like everyone's sitting there, and then like you kind of get marched in. And I'm not equating entering an NFL locker room to entering prison because I don't want to make light of prison. But I'm curious when like Andy Isabella walks in, do you think there's any part of him that's like I should punch Darnell Dockett in the head, or I should punch yeah, you uh, Justin? Bad, you should go to the baddest man in the locker room. Have you ever out. seen anyone enter an NFL locker room with that mindset? Like I'm going to prove myself right away. Yeah, they're yeah, hundred percent. I mean, some rookies come in and they like fall into their role. Like I'm a young guy. Let me hear. Let me listen. Let me you know do what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. And then you have guys that come in and say, "No one's telling me any different." And I've seen both ends of the spectrum. Right. So Isabella's a 95 speed. So yeah, Kyler's a 97. Kyler's a 91. Yeah. Well, I mean, they clearly didn't watch them race. So Kyler can beat him in a race. I think they did race. And yeah. Kyler beat him. Yeah, I don't know. Isabella kind of looked like he was slowing down a little bit. Did he? Okay. I don't know. All right, hey. If he's a, if, give me any 90, what defensive ends are 90s? Ooh. All right, let me do this. Can anyone catch Kyler is the question. Oh. All right, how about we just – let's talk real football for a second with Kyler. Okay. Not I, Madden ratings? They're not real, you're saying? Madden ratings are um, – Trivial? I think, the, I think what you are, though, bringing up as an interesting point is how they stack up against each other. I'm not really curious about what your speed is, but if they think that Kyler Murray is slower than Andy Isabella, but we have proof that Andy Isabella is – I'm checking the name. I, you, you, where are you at right now? 
I've been trying to talk to Justin Pugh for the last five minutes, but in his eyes, I could tell all he's been thinking about is how to correctly say his teammates' last name. It is. It is Isabella. <laughs> I'm looking at it. I got to follow him now. Would you like to? I didn't follow him before this. Would you like to apologize? Yeah, sorry, Andy. Actually, uh, I'm not sorry. You're not. No, he should have make me learn. He his... should have asserted himself. So you, they haven't done. When does like the rookie singing and all that the stuff happen? Training camp. We our rooks have already like done a few things. They've gotten you know they gotten food for us. Nothing crazy. Yeah. Like, this, this isn't a whole. This is not 1994. This isn't Miami Dolphins circa 2011. Yeah. Whenever that Oof. transpired, that was yeah. bad. That was rough. But so they've done some food and all that yeah. stuff. Um, Kyler Murray. Uh, have we seen a moment yet where you guys all looked at each other and went, oh, shit. Have we had one of those yet? Yeah, I mean, the thing about Kyler, and I've said this since he got there, he came in, and I don't know if we told him we were taking him like seven months prior to, but like he, the kid had the offense down. He had great demeanor about him. And I, I said the same thing about Josh Rosen. I still believe Josh Rosen is going to be a great quarterback yeah. in the NFL. Josh is a great, great guy. I remember you told me, you said Josh would just come into the huddle and have a lot of confidence. Yeah. And that was, that's when I was like, oh, I kind of, I can see the teammates believe in Josh Rosen. Yeah. Kyler had that too. 100%. And I think that Kyler came in, the fact that he knew his stuff, because we're up 10. How well did he knew it? I, I made it a whoa, big off season when they were like, Kyler knows the offense better than most of the, was that true? Well, think about this. We've only, we were only there like a month before Kyler got there, so we're all learning at the same pace, right. really. I mean, a new offense, everyone gets to start at square one. And he came in and he did a lot of good things. He brought us donuts. He brought us breakfast sandwiches. So he knew he knew how you to play the simple. game. You guys are simple. Very simple, very simple. And the things he can do athletically, not many guys can do. I mean, mm. I think about Odell as like the first person that comes to mind. When like you see things and you're just like everyone just stops and you you watch how how he throws the ball. Do you is there a play that comes to mind from what you've seen of him so far where you guys all stopped? I think I want to be I, taken to that I've, play. I've probably blocked for two of the not very mobile quarterbacks. Like Eli never runs. And Josh I Rosen. actually, I actually ruined Eli's longest run of his career with a face mask. I like hit someone in the face as they were running away, and ruined it. So Eli, I'm also sorry. I'm, I'm apo- a list of apologies. I'm just doling out here. And then Sam Bradford last year, and and, and Josh was pretty was actually probably the most mobile. Wow. And then I get Kyler Murray, who's probably if he wanted to be, could, is one of the most mobile quarterbacks in the history of the game. Yeah. Up there with Vic. That's what everyone's saying. But that's not what really – I think the first play, he, he we did, you know, a read option or something. He kept it and, like, he just took off. And no, I was like, that people do that in the NFL? <laughs> I've never seen a quarterback. So now the defense has to account for him. You know, you saw Lamar Jackson do it this yeah. year. Yeah. Russell Wilson rarely, rarely sure. ever does it. Rodgers sometimes will do it just to keep people honest because Rodgers can get out and get after it. But just to have that that option is something that I've never experienced. So that was big for me, for me personally. As you're looking through Cliff's pay- playbook and you're kind of running through the plays, how much is the threat of him running a part of that playbook, even if it's like the read option or something like that? I think you have to use your assets. Whatever you have and whatever you have. We also have David Johnson. But I mean, like, are there a lot of plays in there that you've never even seen before where a lot of it's like we're either stretching out a defense with Kyler or something like that? For me, it's a very new offense because I'm coming from pro style, Eli Manning. We drop back. We throw it a thousand times a game. We run it three times. Yeah. And and so now it's it's, it's definitely a different different feel. Um, So I'm excited about it. I'm going to keep learning more about it. And I think the offense will will, – morph into whatever it's going to be sure. based on what we do well and what Kyler does well and how he, he he likes to operate. Kyler in the huddle, what's it like so far? He's got this uh, Texas accent that I, really? I, I tell him, we got to pronounce it. We got to pronunciate things. Like we, I got to hear you say it. So we're getting him to speak up a little bit more. That's but awesome. Beside, I mean, that's, that's something that comes, which is, I think in, in the pro style in college, I don't even know if he was in a huddle ever. Right, exactly. So oh. that's, that's got to be new for him. My thing is, and I, I learned this um, through, I think a lot of people learn this from hot takes on young players. If you're going to judge a young guy in his first rookie camp or his training camp, like I remember I saw Terry Rozier at Summer League when the Celtics took him at 17, and everyone's like, why'd you take him so high? And he was Awful, and people wrote him off, and now he just got fifty million from Charlotte. But to write off any professional athlete 
when you're 20 years old or something like 100%. that is insane. That's so that's why anything that could come out now, like if if Kyler in training camp overthrows some guys early, there will be people that are going to write him off and never watch another snap of him until the regular season. Oh, yeah, his matting accuracy yeah, is, it's gonna is, go is, down. is taking a hit. But that's but, why that's why if there's any even if like oh he's not as vocal as maybe he needs to be in the huddle well yeah because he just fucking got there it's okay yeah I mean if I could take who I was as a rookie and who I am now it's, oh. it's, it's night and day how different so, is it it's crazy I mean I, I don't I don't go out as much I'm not in New York so there's not as many yeah. temptations if you will I'm 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 in a relationship so obviously that's more hanging You're out watching twenty what now twenty eight going on twenty nine. How what do you, how old do you feel in the locker room now? Old. Oh my God. This is a, I got a great story. Because dude, this. you're 28 years old. People are people. If you were not in the NFL, people would say you got your whole life out of you. Yeah. But what is it actually like as a 28 year old? I we we drafted this kid from Boston College, Zach Allen. Got that name right. <laughs> um, it's actually pronounced Zach. Oh, is it? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I know. I know. I know. Um, so he comes into the locker room. He goes, "I was in eighth grade when you got drafted to the Giants." Wow. I said, "Fuck you. Get out." Then I, I dumped him on his head in practice. I said, don't call him. And don't ever say some shit like that to me again. <laughs> like, Eighth grade. So I, I, I look at Larry. I said, Larry, he just made me feel old. I, I can't imagine what you feel right now. He wasn't even conceived yet when no. Larry was a rookie. No. But that's, I mean, 28 years old, and you got people coming up to you and saying, I was in eighth grade. They, they, I was on their Madden team in eighth grade. How, how is that possible? I, I'm not a mathematician here. But eighth grade, now he's in the NFL. like that. 10th, 11th, 12th. Four years of college, so eight. How many years have you been in the NFL? Seven. Yeah, I don't know. I think he's bullshitting me, he right? Be. Or he Maybe might... he was going into ninth and he left. Be... I don't know. Or he graduated early or something He said like eighth that. grade to me. Is it like when you when a young guy comes in, how hard is it to not go, hey, man, keep your head in the playbook, focus? Because I feel like you, you guys also become old so quickly yeah. about like – trying to help guys get through all the bullshit, but you also don't want to be like the old head in the locker room that is like telling people to like straight, like, cause you also want to have fun too. Yeah, like tuck your shirt in and tie yeah. your shoes. Yeah. It, it, there's definitely a fine line. I will never tell a guy not to have fun. Cause I still have fun. You know, I still yeah. like to get after with my buddies and go have a good time. But I also tell the rooks like, Hey, look, when it comes to money, like, like we're talking about, yes. depreciation, depreciating assets. We don't need three cars. We don't need, Rent your mom the house of her dreams. Don't buy it for her yet. Yeah. Wait till you get to that second contract. So I, I feel an obligation to step in because we do have such an epidemic with our players going broke that when it comes to finances, I don't care if I come off as a dad, if I come off yes. as an asshole. I, I, I want guys to be able to take care of themselves and not have to – I've had guys I, – I can't even count on one hand this year that have hit me up and have asked for, asked really? for things, asked for help. Did you do any bad buys when you were a rookie or young? Bad buys, maybe or like, not. or like anything yeah, that you stupid. look. Yeah, yeah, like what? I probably because spent... the more you talk about this, the better. It's it's great for NFL players, yeah. but it's also good for like random, like my thirty three percent that listens to this because w- all of us make dumb decisions. Like I was just in Vegas. Okay, I made a lot of dumb decisions. Yeah, hundred. Craps is not a smart decision. You get a taste, and you go, "Oh, this could be my future." Oh, quick money! I, I, yeah. I'm I'm just drawing up my resignation letter <laughs> in my head right now because I'm winning the lottery tonight. Basically. If I do this every day, so what were what were some of the things that you did early on? That I were- bought a car right away, which I probably wouldn't have done, but I always wanted a Range Rover, so I got the all black, blacked out, sure. black rims, do you still have tinted it? Tinted out. I sold it, and that's when I realized I'll never buy another car unless I'm going to keep it for my entire life. Right. I'll rent one. Um, so that was, I don't think that was a dumb purchase. It was just a, an eye opening, like, hey, maybe you don't need the nicest. Of it's the been nicest. interesting to watch the social media police. Now, I feel like this offseason, because a lot more people are sharing it, we're seeing all the rookies buying houses and cars for their moms. And now the comments are, what a dumb buy. Don't buy cars. That's so stupid. Like, it's actually in a weird way. I want to get angry at yeah. these fans because I want to go. If you could buy your mom a car, you would be you would feel like a hero. Oh yeah! Don't don't come out here and shame these motherfuckers for buying their moms. I'd much rather them be buying their moms a car than do what I did my rookie year. I didn't buy my mom anything. I mean, you know, if she wanted help with something, I'd help her. But I went out and probably spent. Way, I, I know I did. <laughs> spent way too much money just going out and living the life in New York. 
going to a club. I have eight best friends. We all have a tattoo. Yeah. There's an eight. It looks like a Google G, an infinity sign, whatever. The, the Pew e crew. Eli Manning used to call us the infinity bros. What are you in the infinity bros? Here, show it one more time. Out? Yeah. There it is. Nice. And so you guys would go out and you're so picking up out. the bill. Yeah, and you know, if we want to go to a club and they're not letting us in, you put the credit card down, say, whatever you got to charge it, we're doing it. Yeah. I would go to Atlantic City where when I was younger, they would never let us into any of the bars, the right. clubs, anything. You know, living the lifestyle. Now I look back, if I could just save that money and put it away. Ugh. And just if I could just go to every rookie and say, instead of doing what I did, buy your mom the, the car, I think the house is, is such a big purchase that – you should wait. Like I, I did end up buying my mom a house after I got my second deal. Yes. But I think it's it's one of those things where you wait to do it until the timing's right. Make sure you're taking care of yourself first. Immediate issues take care of. If health, whatever. Tell me if this is accurate. I think the hardest part about giving an NFL player advice is talking about how small your career could be to a player that believes he's going to live forever. Yeah. Because if I was an NFL player, I'd go, oh, I'm getting a third contract. I'm definitely getting a second contract. Like, I can say this to you because you got a second contract. Yeah. But most of these guys are not going to get a second contract. But to look an NFL player in the face and go, this might be the only contract you get? Alfred Morris hasn't made $6 million in his whole fucking career. Great. Alfred fucking Morris. Like, that's got to be the hardest part as a financial advisor because if I was a player, I would I would take offense to that. I'm not going to be that percentage. I'm... I'm never going to die. And to me, like, that's got to be the hardest part about having financial conversations with players. And that's why I don't feel bad about it because I've seen it. I can say to a guy, look, I've seen starting receivers go out and get hurt and never see another contract. I've seen second, second round, third round, fourth round picks never see the field. Yes. Like, when I was with the Giants, like, none of our draft picks made it to a second contract. Like, no one was even around. After like two years, all the guys were gone. Right. So I've seen the 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 average career, which is two and a half years. You don't even get pension. You don't get 401k unless you get three years and three games. Really? The average player doesn't even get any benefits. Wow. So because three years and three games is a is a very sizable career. Yeah. In the NFL. It's a four year you're you're on a team for four years. Yeah. Average player doesn't get that. Shit. So my thing is if if you know, obviously we're going through negotiations now and and we're right. starting to see more and more. I, I just want to get more things for guys without them even knowing it. Right. I want to change our – we get paid 17 weeks out of the year. So you go, your, your salary divided by 17 is how much that player gets per week. So if you, if, if you have a guy making $17 million, he's getting a million-dollar check every week. For just those 17 for weeks. For just those 17 weeks. And then you don't get a paycheck the rest of the year. The rest of the year. So it's awesome. You get your money. All these guys are like, give me my money now. I want it now. Yeah. I want to I want to spread it out. I want a 34-week pay period where you're not getting as much per week. Because you have the guy making a million dollars a week. That's your best player. Yeah, your yeah. elite players. Then you have your barely fringe players that aren't making at all, that are making 400 grand, which don't get mad at me out there, everyone. No. That's amazing money. But, but they only but have a value is a, they only have a short period of time to make it. Right. If that guy makes four hundred thousand for three years, then loses his job, has no work experience, never did an internship in college, he can't make a hundred grand after that per year. No. So this but is what about what about life. signing stuff, man? There's just like I know that you want to do some media when you get done. I know a lot of players that want to do media. You're very realistic about how competitive this shit is. 100%. Like, like. I know people that thought they were going to go to the media and then no fucking calls came because let's be really honest where who like Fox, like if you're going to call a game, there's like six games, six people, and they're probably already filled. You're not getting on NFL on Fox pregame show because it's going to be Strahan and Howie and Jimmy. And don't come to me with, well, maybe they'll move on from one. Because yeah. if they move on from one, they're calling Peyton Manning. They're not going to call like a long snapper or a backup real. linebacker. They're not, calling a, an, they're not calling an offensive lineman either. ESPN makes like two or three hires a year. Um, like maybe. And like, there's just not a lot of those jobs. And then you go, well, what about like uninterrupted or bleacher report? And it's like, maybe it's, it, what if, and that's why I want all these guys to kind of do stuff while they're playing. And which is like kind of what you're doing now, but yeah. also like start your own shit. You know what I mean? But 
I never realized that the paychecks only come after games. All the stories I've ever heard about getting to your locker and the paychecks there, but I never realized it didn't come in the other weeks. Yeah. So these guys also have to be smart during the rest of the year or else they're sitting there scratching their neck, be like, when's my paycheck coming this week is, one? This is the issue. So guys get to weeks, you know, get to March, April, May, June. No money's coming in at this point. It's starting to dry up. So now they're like. So that's why these players are cheap when I take them out to dinner in March. Yeah, you got to take them out during the season. You take them out, <laughs> if you take them out on a Tuesday off day and they just got 23 grand. Tuesday's the day to go. Tuesday's the day to take an Tuesday. NFL player out to eat. And that's the issue we run into. Guys are getting checks. You know, you're making 400000 You know, lop off half in taxes because yep. we're, you're in it's that the bracket. the taxes, yep. So then, you know, you pay your agent. You pay your you, whoever else is in that in that field. And then you're left with that money, and you're like, wow, I still have $12,000. And they think they're getting it every week. They're not. So that's when they go buy these houses. They go buy these cars because they're like, I'm getting twenty thousand a week. This is gonna last forever, like you said. Yes. And it doesn't. When week seventeen comes along. Now I've seen guys take loans, like paying back forty percent interest on these loans. Like Wow. Because people will come in. There are sharks out there that are just waiting for June, July to hit, and these guys are struggling for money. See, what's interesting about that is I've always heard the sharks in terms of, you know, come and invest in this or taking advantage of like you having lump sums of money and trying to get you to buy into a private jet or you know buy when into they show up, they show up on Tuesdays. Tuesday they, they show up. Outside. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. But like, I would fucking believe it during bro. the season when they know that money's coming in a hundred percent. Let me go get, let me call them now. You call me in June. I'm not ready to write that check. Interesting. You call me during the season when they, Oh, what do I want to do with this money? Cause guys are thinking about it. That's when the sharks are in the water. So when you're, when you're hearing all this CBA talks right now, as someone that is taking meetings about your financial future and actually paying attention to it, my theory is that the NFL always tries to float out new ideas right before a CBA so that you guys argue for everything other than money. We're going to play 18 game schedule and only have 16. And then you guys spend all this time arguing against it. And by the way, they're like, we're just going to keep the 50, whatever percent we have in revenue. Like, how many players in the NFL do you think are really up to date about the current CBA discussions and all that stuff? I don't even want to talk about it at all because then— You're a player rep, right? Yeah, I'm an alternate player rep, which is the best kind of rep to be. Because you're not having to make the phone calls every day? No, I still, I still get on the phone call. I still want to know what's going on, and I want to be involved. And when I was in New York, Zach Diossi is the long right. snapper. He got me involved and said, hey, look, this is directly going to impact your future, the, the guys that come after us future— so this this whole lockout, possibility CBA, all that that happened yeah. in 2011. These guys lived through it, and we know it's on the horizon. We know 2020 is right around the corner. We know the owners you yeah. know, have some things that they want to get accomplished, and as a players' union, we have to we have to band together. We have to be stronger than ever. So I don't like I don't even want to get into it because I I might say something I don't want to say. Oh, so about you're it. that well versed in it. I know what's going on, yeah. How about this? And speaking generalities, just from 2011, all I hear about from the NFLPA side is that you guys are more prepared than ever. Does it feel that way? Like, is there, like, kind of a confidence? I wasn't here in 11. I mean, I was Just in from what you've heard from, like, Diossi. And yeah, and, and everything was – it was so crazy what was going on then. We just need, you know, more and more guys. You, you have 32 billionaires, and then you have, you know, all the players, whatever you're getting numbers. 3,500 or something like that. It's it's and these guys are the best at what they do in their business. So that's why we at, at with the PA have tried to find the best yeah. that we can to help represent us to help make this a fair fight. Man. Because me versus Jerry Jones or me versus Stephen Ross Ain't or me go versus well Michael you. Bidwell, it's not going to go well for me. Yeah, I can you know we were talking about just trying to come up with some financial terms yes. just now and we struggle. Yeah. These guys made their living. What does that. FDIA mean? Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't want to get you in trouble. And I, I also I think the interesting thing with talking about the CBA with a player is. You don't want to be the player that speaks for all of the players right now. Yeah. You know what I and mean? And I love our guys, so I'm going to fight for everything that our guys yeah. can get without even knowing it. And I'm, I want to fight for the guy that's all the way at the bottom and the guy all the way at the top. We have to protect the middle class of the NFL. We need the game to be stronger than ever going forward, and I think we're going to try to get that accomplished, and we'll see where it goes. I've been saying for three years that I thought this was going to end in a lockout. 
But there were some reports that came out recently that like they're actually making good progress. I would love it if the NFL could get to a part where kind of the NBA is, where there's a lot of trust. Like I was, I was flying back from Vegas, and I was sitting next to one of the pro, pro player personnel people for the Cavaliers, and we were just talking about different stuff. And I'm asking, you think Ben Simmons is going to get a jump shot? All that stuff. But then we were talking about Adam, and and they said the best part about Adam is our players trust Adam. And that's where I hope the NFL gets to where it's not we're going to fight for what we want. It's every contract. They made us an offer that respected us from the get go. It's not about what can we take from you guys. It's we've we've talked about it and we think you guys deserve this. That's what I want. 100 percent. Imagine if we were in a league where there wasn't like this big brother watching over us. Yes. Because that's what it feels like, bro. With our commissioner right now. Yeah. Imagine if we could be in a league where, like the NBA, like you said, there's so much money. The NFL is the number one sport yeah. revenue-wise in, in, in the country. Let's let's work together. Like, the more yeah. we can do, the better we can be all together. It, 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 but it's tough. Everyone has their hands in the cookie jar. And, of course. And, and, so we're going to see. I mean, obviously, I, I have a, a lot of faith in our union. We have a lot of smart guys that play in this league that are yeah. that are standing up and they're ready to to, to, to help make some changes and uh, and hopefully it all it all works out. Uh, we were talking uh, we were talking about Isabella before. Um, how how has he looked so far? Like just in camps and stuff like that. He's the. I'm gonna get his name wrong and then I'm gonna say this. This poor Bella. kid. Just say Bella. Isabella. Isabella. Yeah. You said he's like the freshman of the team, but how is he on the field, though? Oh, unbelievable. Really? Yeah, yeah. You look at him, and he looks like he's, you know, you're at the varsity practice, and he's the JV kid. The yeah. jersey's a little too big for him. Yeah. Every time I see him, I guess I don't call him Isab- Isabella. I just, I don't know what I say to him. I don't even know what I call him. I'm like, hey, hey, bud. I think I just butt him or yeah. hey, pal. We got to get you a smaller jersey so it fits you better. Yeah. But the kid can make plays. I mean, really? there's, there's a reason why, like, He's always catching the ball. Everyone's always screaming. Not his name. I don't know what everyone's calling him now. I, 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 don't. I think my O-line coach must have been calling him Isadella, and that's why I started call- I don't know how. Eh, whatever. I love it. But because that's the thing is, is sometimes, like, I know that Isabella was, I'm going to call him Andy. Andy was really loved by, like, the, the draft community as, like, a guy that could come in right away and really be special, like, in the slot and stuff like that. And so I'm always curious because he doesn't look physically imposing, but you yeah. saying right now he's making splashes already for this. Yeah, team. you make plays. You're like, who is it? Like, you know when someone's making plays, and you can obviously tell in a skill position who, yeah. who, who has it and who doesn't, whereas offensive line, I feel like the other teammates don't really get to see that battle as much, but – Every time I turn around, the kid's making a play or making a catch. Cliff, you were excited about him when he first got there. Yeah. You could tell he was cool. Um, does the quality, like, what kind of a coach is he? What have you learned already just being around in the building and all that stuff? He's very laissez-faire. Like, just go get into your meeting rooms. Let's 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 handle what we can control. I'm not going to hold you guys in team meetings long. I'm not running it. You know, I've had coaches before, and it's very, like, regimented and, and – and, Tom Coughlin, it was great what oh he my would do, God. and he would he would have us, you know, Abraham Lincoln was born on today, Martin Luther King, this was it, it's his holiday. This is what made him so great and why he was great, and he would give us these lessons, and it was unbelievable. It's just a, a different approach to, yeah. to coaching. He There's was something more, beautiful about he that. Was, he was just coaching us to be men as well as football players, and Cliff comes in, and he's like, it's his first go around too, so I know sure. he's, you know obviously he was at the college level, but coaching men, I think like Larry and Phil Dawson are like they're in the same draft, like they were all like right around the same time. Cliff That's came awesome. in, so he's very like let's turn this thing around. We got to worry about this football thing first. Whereas Coughlin's like I've won two Super Bowls, so I he's he's building off of what he's doing. Yes. I, I didn't get to see Coughlin year one, which apparently yeah. wasn't very good. He bumped he yeah. bumped heads with a lot of players. So Cliff's done a great job so far coming in. We're getting back to the football. We're getting in there. We're gonna we're gonna write this ship and then you know build as we go. How like people always say he's cool just the way he dresses and stuff. Like, like is he cool? Like was there a story or something like that where you're like, man, this guy. Whether it's like a speech that he kind of gave or like something that kind of happened. It's just overall demeanor. Like yeah. he he he's just he he gives off a sense of like this guy just has it. Whatever whatever it is, and. I don't have a I don't have a specific story right now. I'll have one by the end of the year of yeah. like something he's done, but he's just he's just been great. You know, he he just has a good rapport with the players. Guys respect him, and he knows football. 
How are you, by the way? How's your wrist and everything? The hand's good. The knee's good. Yeah. I, I feel as good as I've ever felt. I mean, And I, then week one will hit, and then we'll see how you feel then. Exactly. And that, well, that's the thing, too. I can't – there's nothing I can do differently in the offseason. Like, I, I don't – Nothing. I don't go out nearly as much. I don't do anything but work out and get ready to go. I play, I play golf and yeah. get ready to play football. So – you can't do anything about breaking a hand. You can't do anything about a ligament in your knee going. Yeah. So the past two years, I put them behind me. I feel better than I am. I'm back at left guard, my natural position. Mm. When I was with the New York Giants, I was kind of like, hey. You played every position. We're playing Von Miller this week. You're playing right tackle. All right, Aaron Donald, all right, you're going back Where'd to left guard. Where would you play guard. last year? I played right guard last year. Who would you have at left that moved you to Mike right? Mike Capati, who only had played left. And Mike's right. an unbelievable player, but he only plays left. And now you're going to go back to left. So I'm pumped to go back to left guard. Is it... Like, I in, in Madden, you can just flip guys around. It doesn't even matter. Yeah. Um, and we've talked, I think, before about how different it is. Mm -hmm. to, you say, like, to be home. Is, is, how exciting is it to be at a position that you think is natural for you? You feel comfortable. You don't have – there's no anxiety about, like, what ifs. Like, you feel awkward stepping with a foot a certain way and doing a certain block. You're so, not, it's, it's, you're not thinking as I'm, much. I'm, yeah, it's a hundred percent natural in that, in that aspect. And I think I, I've done it enough where I feel comfortable doing it. I played games in the NFL at right yeah. tackle and right guard, but I feel the best at left guard. I think Josh, it was either Josh Shitton or somebody's like, they asked him or TJ Lang, one of the Packers guards. Yeah. yeah. There's like, what's it like switching from left to right? And he was like, go home and wipe your ass with the other hand and see how messy it gets. Yeah. You can still get it done, but sometimes it's a little, it's, the technique isn't as the, it's not there. Man. Um, I think, I, I think there's reason to be excited about you guys. I think you, the offensive line as a whole being healthy, David Johnson being healthy has, is he out there doing stuff right now? Yeah. That guy's a freak. Where, where are we at with David Johnson? How's he look compared to the injuries and kind of a slow start last year? Yeah. I think, well, obviously when you're not very good on the field and you guys are putting up points and you're down in games, you can't just feed David Johnson yeah. the ball. So I think he's obviously going to be a big part of our offense. People forget that he's one of the best running backs in the NFL. Like, Absolutely. Oh, who's this guy that almost went for, you know, he had almost the one year, what do you have, a thousand, a thousand? I think he went a thousand on both. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's, he's in great shape. He's a great guy. So I'm looking forward to him having a big year bouncing back as well as the entire team. All right, I want to see what David Johnson's reading is. Yeah, he's got to be, I bet you he's in the 80s. He's got to be in the 80s. David Johnson is an 87. With a 92 speed. So they still put some respect on him. I think so, too. Kyler Murray is a 73. What's like the other – he's the best-rated quarterback or best-rated rookie? Eli is a 72. Oof. I already know – Matt Stafford is a 79. So they're really just cracking down. But can you believe that? I can't – Carson Wentz is an 82. Well, Carson Wentz is kind of in the same boat. The injury type the of thing. The injury thing. So – so the top-rated quarterback, do you think? Who do you think it is? Tom Brady, Mahomes. He's Mah on the cover. Mahomes is ninety-seven. Brady's ninety-six. So they really think. So if you were starting a team, just had one year to play, I would take Mahomes over Brady. No, oh, you're crazy. I mean, you had one year, and your life depended on getting a ring. Who's this coaching year. the team? Doesn't matter. We, it's, it's just you're coaching the team. Yeah. Then I want Mahomes. You rather okay? Cause because you're saying Mahomes Belichick. is going to overcome my bad. Co I'm not saying I'm not pulling a Sims and saying that Brady is made by Belichick. I'm just saying that if I just start a team and it's like a random assortment of pieces, I believe the piece that is the most versatile that can do the most stuff is Mahomes. Okay. That's what I think. And, but I think you're discrediting what Tom Brady brings I into agree. that locker room. I am too. totally disagree. Because if you have a bunch of mismatch of pieces, Tom Brady's been to the promised land. Tom You're Brady right. knows what it takes and, to And win. I think I realized that a lot through Nick Foles, who's a 77, by the way. But just hearing the Jaguars talk about Nick Foles, and it was a Calais Campbell quote where he pretty much said, the fact that I can look over and see Nick Foles is there – a Super Bowl MVP yeah. gives me a lot of confidence. And I do think that I underrate that with Tom Brady in terms of when he goes out there and, and we had Ross Tucker in here talking about how he runs the agility drills still. He's still working on the snap every fucking play yep. and going over to the center going, perfect snap. And it has to be perfect. That, that does set the tone. But I, I think also we discredit the other quarterbacks by, by acting like they don't operate that way oh yeah 100 percent. but i think that like the, the fact that he's able because patrick is still so young yes older guys aren't gonna like if he like freaks out about something they're gonna 
take it more from Tom Brady than they would with Patrick Mahomes. Gotcha. So if you're trying to get a team in line. What, but even if Mahomes won the MVP? Like when you're coming off an MVP, how much weight does that hold in a locker room, do you think? Uh, definitely a lot of weight. You're the MVP. You're the best player in the NFL. Yeah. But when you're considered as the greatest of all time, like if, if – I'll even take Eli Manning and say this. If it was Eli Manning and Patrick Mahomes giving me, like, yelling at me for something, yeah, Eli, I'm 100% respecting that more than the Patrick Mahomes wow. criticism. That's interesting. Because he's been around. He's seen it all. He's seen yeah. it. So no, I totally get what you're saying. You know right what now. I mean? Like, yeah. Eli Manning has been around some of the best guards in the NFL. He's seen what it takes to win a championship. Gotcha. Patrick Mahomes is probably the most skilled player in our league right now. I mean, him, Aaron Rodgers, you could debate yes. it. Um. But you're right. I think it's it's like the like I think about like Madden ratings and all that stuff. You can't really factor everything in because they're not going to understand all that like leadership and things. Yeah, it's it's not saying that Mahomes is a bad leader, but undoubtedly no. Andy Reid is probably talking to those guys just as much. Whereas a Rodgers or a Brady or even an Eli goes, you got to slide more to your left there, and then you're not going to question it because how many slides has he seen in his career? Exactly, thousands upon thousands. So I do get it. The culture is 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 the biggest thing in the NFL. The reason I give Mahomes so much credit, though, is I really think the fact that because his dad was a professional athlete, his ability to communicate with guys is so good because he's been in locker rooms for so long. Now, I know that from a player's perspective, you want to see the wins, and the Super Bowls give you a lot of credo, but. Yeah, I, the, the rankings really get crazy at three. Who do you think is number three? Mahomes is one, Brady's two. Who do you think is three? Well, you said Rodgers is, is nine. Rogers, so I know Rodgers isn't, isn't Rogers nine. is four, five, sixth. Drew Brees? Drew Brees is... Hold on a second. He's not even on this fucking list. He's not on the list. No, hold on, hold on, hold on. What are you, what are you, what are you sorting this by? Hold on, because Rivers is three. We're rating it on the amount of kids? <laughs> that was a good one. He's a 94, huh? 95, 96? 94. All right, hold on. I need to, because Breeze has to be on this. I need the full list. Okay, so number one is Mahomes. Number two is Brady. Number three is dun, 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 Philip Rivers. Oh, so he is. He's so you were right. No, no, I was right. Well, no, Rivers, you, you told me that. Philip Rivers is three rating. at 94. Breeze is number four at 92. Okay. Luck is number five at 92. Russell Wilson is 91 and Rodgers is 90. How the hell is Philip Rivers better than Russell Wilson or Aaron Rodgers? I love Philip Rivers. Yeah. But at this point of his career, come on, man. That's, he a, can't, that's a tough one. And we need I, to, I'm we, not crazy, right? We literally didn't even know if Andrew Luck would ever be able to play again until last year. And he's rated higher than Aaron. Yeah. I'm guessing Aaron Rodgers is getting knocked because of the injury thing he's experienced. Baker Mayfield is better than Carson Wentz. Is it too soon for that? I think or that might someone... be a flash in the pan type of reaction to that. You know, he, we've seen what he, how, many, how many games he played last year? 11? Andy Dalton is higher than Matthew Stafford and Jimmy Garoppolo. A Garoppolo, I get because Garoppolo. How many games has Garoppolo started? Yeah, that's true. That's true. So I can't. Total, yeah. If you go dollars and contracts, obviously Garoppolo is up there. Yeah, but well, Matthew Stafford is a stud. That's what I don't understand. Matthew Stafford and Marcus Mariota have the same rating. That just seems a little crazy to me. Yeah. Like I, I think Mariota's great. And, and you're right. I, I will give credit because you know I, I'm very tough on the Eagles. Yeah. Because I used to kick our ass when I played for the Giants for all those years. I had to hear it's it a from, weird, from yeah, It's you a weird guys. relationship for you. But Wentz should definitely – I mean, he was going to be the MVP that year if if, yes. if uh, he doesn't get hurt. I so I'm guessing the, the injury thing, If you, what have you done for me lately, Madden, is what it is. You want to hear something wild, too? The three quarterbacks that are on the Washington football team, Alex Smith, Case Keenum, and Dwayne Haskins, all have a higher rating than Eli. That's crazy. I think that yeah, that's some disrespect. You love Eli so much. I'm a I'm a fan. Now what are you gonna do? I, My God, because I know him more than just what people perceive of him. You're gonna defend Eli for me right now. I've been doing quarterback rankings for random things. How good they are at grilling. How they would finish if they were doing like a manhunt. I have put Eli like last dunking in a pool everything. last in everything. <laughs> what does Eli do really well? Off the field. That if I were to make a list of every quarterback in the NFL starting, he would be number one. Work ethic. 
Oh man, I wanted like beer drinking. Oh, I, I guarantee you, I can drink. Okay, I had him. I had him second to last. Okay, that's bad because I told Kyler, I said, "Hey, look, we got to do this chug challenge because I think I'm the best beer chugger in the NFL." What? O lineman wise, David Bakhtiari, that's my guy. Yes, Dave, Dave will vouch for me in this. You believe this is going to go big? I can feel it. You believe you're the best beer chugger in the NFL? Yeah. I, I haven't lost to I haven't lost to Dave. I definitely didn't lose to Dave. Who else has done it? Kyle Long. If you believe you're the best beer drunker in the NFL, and I believe a lot of people think it's Bakhtiari, I want you to look in that camera and I want you to say, David Bakhtiari, I challenge you to a chug off, and I'm the best beer chucker in the NFL. David yeah, well, Bakhtiari, where are we at? David Bakhtiari. He's my boy too. We, we've been to we've been around the world together. Um you, you know, you know what it is when it comes to drinking a beer. You know I got your number. Even though his was very impressive, you're the best left tackle in football, my friend, but I think you might be the second best beer chugger. We need to figure this out. So this means, though, that you're going to need to put out a video. I'll, I'll put one out. Okay. I, I didn't want to do it because it, I didn't want to, like, be that guy. Everyone was hopping on the trend. Yes, yes, yes. So I, I said to Kyler, I said, you hey, look, do the Kyler. Bottle cap, the bottle cap challenge or anything like that? I said, Kyler, we have to do a beer drinking thing because, you know, Rogers. Trubisky. I said, me and you as a team. It. Yeah. Kyler doesn't drink beer. So Kyler automatically can't be in your easy. Oh, no, I had him very low. Okay. Very low. Okay. Yeah, he didn't. No, I, he didn't. It's just like gun to your drink. head if you, ha you have to chug a beer. Who's chugging it the fastest? Yeah. You don't think Eli can put down a beer? Oh no, I know he can. I just like putting Eli on the bottom okay. of the rankings. It's just my it's my Do little rivalry with Eli. You think Wentz is a good beer chugger? I had Wentz very average. I people got upset because he's from North Dakota. Yeah. I had Wentz as my number one griller. No, my number three griller. Breeze was my number one griller. Stafford's my number two. Like I did really deep research. Like I saw Case Keenum and Tahoe for that tournament. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, man, I have I had you as my number four griller. He goes, I saw that. He goes, you had me. He goes, you found a picture from my Instagram like five years ago. I go, I do a lot of research for dumb shit, Case that's, Keenum. That's amazing. Yeah. But isn't does Wentz even drink? Wentz, isn't I he super religious? He's very religious, but I also think so. If it was like whole, if it was like the the wine, the the blood of Christ, he'd crush that. He would he'd be crush number. It. He'd be the number one. He'd be the <laughs> number one blood of Christ. Or drinker. remembering words in Corinthians, like yeah. Carson Wentz. But no, Carson Wentz, because Carson Wentz could hunt a deer. Ooh. And the, like a fresh deer. So he's like who you want if you're on an island. He's number one. He he was my number one hunger. No, what's the um, Hunger Games? Yeah. My number one Hunger Games guy. Because he's going to like make a perch in a tree and then like paint his whole face like Predator style. I will give you that. I, if I had to do Hunger Games, I would put yes. him by last for Hunger Games. Yeah, because he's kind of slow and he's like also going to try and be friendly too. Who who else? Give me some Mariota was my worst in Hunger Games. Really? Is yeah. he Hawaiian? Like they like I just hunt don't on think, the islands. And yeah, stuff? but I don't think he would. I think he's too nice. Too nice. Yeah, you don't want to hurt. Something. Mariota was my number one stepdad rankings. Like if if, if a quarterback in the NFL yeah, be became step your stepdad, Marcus Mariota would be number one. He'd be incredible. He'd take you to Hawaii. You know what I mean? But that he'd also be, be super respectful to mom, which is very important. That's the biggest. Like, coming from a guy that was had a stepdad. Kyle Brandt we had from Good Morning Football on, and he was like, it's very important that they're like a nice guy. I was like, that's why Mario's my – and Fitzpatrick was too. You know what For I mean? For a stepfather? For stepdad. Yeah, he might get you into Harvard. That, and he's like super friendly and stuff. and like He's seen a lot of things. He might crack open a Coors Banquet beer and like slide it to you under the table and go, don't tell your mom. You know what I mean? Like if you're really good at it. You put a lot of thought into this. Too much. Too much. So Eli, I was going to do like – quarterback most likely to catch a fly in his mouth because like Eli would be good at that too. <laughs> are you are you basing that off of the face? The face? Yeah, Manning face. Manning face. What do you so on back to the financial stuff because I yeah. I didn't realize how well versed you were in this. Like of a 53 man roster, how many of them do you think like know what a 401k is and can like are really preparing for life after football in an intelligent way right now out of the 53 man roster? I want to say I want to take it to 65 because we're going to include practice squad in okay. this. It, there's not a lot of guys. It's not a lot. And I, I'll be the first to say I was one of those guys that had no idea. I mean, there's probably – if guys in the locker room have a question about 401K, there's only probably like three or four guys, the reps on the team, that know what, what – have any answers for anybody. Man, how many of them do you think are being taught well by their agents? Even less than that. I mean, that's no knock to the agents whatsoever. 
an agent has 10, 15, right. 20 guys. You, yeah. You can't be – luckily for me, my agent has been – you know, it's my guy. And we've developed a relationship that he's – all decisions I make, I, I always give him a call. Andy Ross, Select Sports Group. Um, shout out, shout out, He's shout the best. Out. But um, – it, it's very it's sad. It, it, it's it's a sad time when you see. But guys. I don't I don't put it just on the players. I think sometimes a lot of like a lot of times people want to say, "Oh, they're dumb." Most people don't know what to do with their finances. I'm dumb. Like I think I'm, I'm really a, dumb. I think I'm a smart guy. You know what makes me smart? I know I'm not smart. Mm. So I find the guys that are smart, and that's who I call when I have questions. That makes sense. And and if we can do more of that, because the, the one thing that does. I wish we could just change the perception. Guys aren't idiots. They're smart in the sense that they, they know how to take care of their business. Yeah. We talk to each other. We, we try to help each other out the most we can. But we're also trying to make sure we keep our jobs. So football has to come first. Has to. Has to come first. And then other things fall in line. So a lot of times guys, because they're on the fringe, they're barely making the team, they have no time for anything else. You don't have guaranteed contracts. I'm lucky enough that I've had guarantees throughout my career. So I can, in the off seasons, I'm not – I'm obviously working – very hard to be yeah. good at what I do and to remain, but I have a time to think about what if, what do I want to do after the game, and I think more guys have to because when you get done and you've had no work experience, it's it's it's, it's a cold world. Is it is it a little scary? I've heard you say that now twice, where it's like you don't have work experience. Yeah, is that scary to think about it ending and kind of like what do I do then after that? If I had to write a resume right now, besides the NFL stuff, it's obviously would get me into a lot a lot of places yeah. and open a lot of doors. True work experience. Went to Syracuse University, obviously one of the very, you know, thought about university. Great, great academics. Prestigious. Prestigious. Thank you. I went to Syracuse, a lot of dumbasses. uh, Yeah. (laughs) I'd have to put down Box Boy at a deli. And I worked for, I worked at doing like popcorn at bar mitzvahs. Like I would serve popcorn at like bar mitzvahs. (laughs) That's my two things. I worked at UPS when I was at Syracuse. Yeah. Like just sat in an office at UPS for four weeks man that's my only work experience so it's a little scary it's very scary i mean it's it, it, you go into some of these the uh the play the director of player development down in miami caleb thornhill okay started this thing called athlete transition university he invited oh, this is cool i've never heard about this before he invited one guy from every team so out my last year in new york i get this box in my locker and it's just a key in it and it has like this phrase on it. I didn't know who it was from. I didn't yeah. know what it was. It just basically said, you're going to be hearing from us soon. Didn't even know how it got on my locker, who connected me. So I get a call from this guy, Caleb, and he's like, hey, look, we're going to be in New York in March. I'm getting uh, two or three guys from every team, guys that I think would be good fit for this. We're going to meet uh, the CEO of, of Rock Nation. Uh, we're going to meet all these entrepreneurs, owner of the Atlanta Falcons, not not Falcons, Atlanta Hawks, the basketball team, Jesse Isler. He's like, mm-hmm. a, his wife started Spanx. Yes. They kill it. He's he's the man. So he came and spoke to us. We have, I think it's Jay Brown, it's like the CEO of, of Rock Nation, came and spoke with us. We had just guys from all different real estate, yes. finance, everything, come and speak with us and be like, hey, what interests you? What could you see yourself doing? You have the access now where you can pick up a phone and call a CEO. He'd be like, oh, wow, I'll return this guy's call. He's yeah. an NFL player. Start using it now. Start leveraging your— And did you start doing that? I did. I did. I started—I didn't call, you know, I didn't call Jesse Itzler and be like, hey, can I get a job? Yeah. But I started just finding out what makes these people successful. What have they done throughout their lives? What do I have interest in? And real estate has been one of those things that I, I love. So finding, you know, I've been looking at multifamily homes. I'm trying to buy something here eventually. Yeah. But uh, learning as much as I can. And when I go into some of those meetings— they're speaking Chinese. I have no idea what they're saying. Right. So you just keep going back and back until you learn how to say a few words and kind of get by. Yeah. And just be a fly on the wall and then try to try to, to get it how you can. Why do you think they picked you of all the Giants? So it ended up coming – a friend of mine, an acquaintance that I had met, now is a really good friend of mine, uh, my a lawyer in New York – he met Caleb and he's like, hey, I met Justin Pugh. Kid is unbelievable. Yeah. I'm not trying to hype myself. What a liar. Up. He said, he's, yeah, yeah, exactly. I said, thanks for, thanks for telling him <laughs> all that bullshit. But he's like, yeah, he, has, he kind of has it together. He's kind of thinking of what could possibly be next and, and wants to help out. Yeah. So that's, that's how it got connected. Some, word of mouth, just being a, being a good person outside of the, the facility. I feel like it's the first thing is kind of admitting that it's okay and that it's scary. That when it's over you know what i mean like because eric morgan was like one of the guys and yeah, he just, just, retired. just retired today and you know he's he wants to get into these opportunity zones which the government like designates these areas that are 
in bad shape. Yeah. And he wants to go into some of these areas and help give back and, and do some impact funding. Man. Ndamukong Sue was was there. He was another guy that's we all we know he's him and Warren Buffett are like best friends. Yes, from his so, time in Nebraska. Yeah, it's a little bit of an advantage right there. Yeah, you have probably the smartest investor of all time at your disposal. Man, but it's it's just fascinating to me because um, everyone thinks that these guys are living the life that you guys are just walking into mansions with models and that chocolate milk is coming out of a water <laughs> fountain and that you come home and each of you has the LeBron personal trainer and a personal nutritionist and a personal dietitian. And anytime you guys get hurt um, or you guys get in trouble, why don't you have a butler and why don't you have a driver and, and all these things? And it's, it, it, they don't realize the truth behind Let it. Let me give you my truth right now. So I have a house in Arizona. It's awesome. It's under construction right now. I'm doing some things. That's like, people are like, oh, that's bougie. Yeah. I moved to New York for six weeks to come back. I wanted to do this, uh, you know, come meet with some of the real estate people. Yeah. See my family. I'm living in a shoebox right now, 41st and 10th Avenue. Wow. I hear honking at all hours of the night. So Welcome I sleep with earbuds York. in. Do you I had really? to get blackout shades. I take the subway every day to the gym to work out. Wow. Down in Tribeca. So I'm not living like this lavish lifestyle right now. I'm, I think that's just the biggest misconception. Yeah. And a lot of guys are doing the same thing I'm doing. They're just regular guys. I'll get stopped every once in a while. Oh, you, you didn't you used to play for the Giants? Why are you on the subway? Well, because I'm not going to wait seven hours in an Uber to get down here. It yes. just makes more sense. The subway, by the way, is hell. That's what hell is. Oh, the, man. the humid... Waiting I, for the two train, three train, well, whatever. You came to New York during the worst time of the year. You came to New York when everyone leaves on the weekends and that like it's a thousand degrees because of the oh. concrete and the cars and the sidewalks. Like I live in a fifth floor walk up. It's like 1887 brick. Yeah. So literally all the heat just rises to my apartment. And if I don't have the AC going at all times, I will bake in that place. But I was on the subway today. And this is the time for people that don't live in New York where people are so hot and bothered that fights happen on the subway often. And there was a guy on the subway today that was, I want to say he was schizophrenic because he was like yelling to himself. Yeah. But then other people on the subway started yelling at him. And I'm like, you're going to yell at the yelling guy on the train? Like I did the thing where I, I went in between the cars yeah. on a moving train. Oh, you got out. Yeah, because I was like, I... Because you never know. You get I will not allow myself... To be in a situation with uncontrollable people when I c and I can avoid it. If I can walk away 100%. in New York, like people in New York, especially if you're visiting, they'll see people like fighting on the street and they'll either record it or they're going to just watch it. Get the fuck out of 100%. there, bro. I don't want to be near any, like, oh, I need to see it. Really? There's like a thousand other people here. They want the experience. Get the me out of here. I don't want to be anywhere near you people. They're jackhammering. There should be a law. You can't jackhammer or honk. I got to talk to GM or Chevy or so Ford or somebody. You, when you lived in it's Hoboken, ridiculous. it was all nice and calm. There's no honking on, on 14th Street in Hoboken. Yeah. No. Th I, this is miserable. I live in Manhattan, too. I know all about it. But what if you and like I downtown a little bit more? I'm, I'm somehow For some reason, I decided Times yeah, Square. Times Square. Great idea. Idiot. But <laughs> a Syracuse guy actually owns the building. Oh, so it worked out awesome. for you? Yeah, he's he he that's the reason I did right, it. It was, well, the, it was a good rent. It was the path it. of least resistance. Yes. No, I'm I'm kind of downtown too. And let me just say another tip about New York. If you're gonna live near a firehouse, live on the firehouse block. I live a block and a half away, and that's when they're allowed to turn their sirens on. Ugh. The honking. The honking should be illegal. <laughs> It should only be for emergency purposes. Like you have to prove that, like you were in tr like dramatic situations. Yeah. No, not how it's gonna go. I've had honking for a minute straight before. Can I ask you a serious question? This is a football one. Yeah. Um, when the steroid thing happened with Patrick Peterson, I will openly admit that I texted Patrick Peterson and I said, "Hey, man, I don't know what the fuck happened, but I hope you're good. I know you're gonna battle back." Blah blah blah. I don't know what happened. Whatever. As a teammate. What is it like when you hear that a teammate, that's being levied against them? Um, it happens in our league. And a lot of times, when I first heard, I thought it was, it was came out, it was like a, a banned substance so, a substance. so I thought maybe it was like Adderall or something. Because yeah. normally that's what it is. Guys take an Adderall, and, and really, I don't 
think that's a, the biggest performance in Hampshire yeah, in the world. But yeah. that's a whole nother a whole nother fight. I mean, it so can I, enhance your performance. I I really um, thought that that's what it was, and I'm never I, I'm not like knocking a guy for taking an Adderall. Right. And I don't know what happened in Patrick's case, and I don't know what goes on in his life. And I yeah. know he deals with a lot of different things, and he was going through a tough time last year. So you can do nothing but support your team, man. Because at the end of the day, that guy's coming back to work. Yeah. That guy's going to show up week six ready to go. That guy is one of the best cornerbacks in the NFL. Yeah. We need him. So if I, I would never – guys mess up. Guys screw up all the time. Imagine if someone followed you around with a camera and, like, one time you messed up. You probably get a personal conduct policy for well, – I just had Edelman anything. on here, you know, and, and – I. You know, there were certain things I wasn't allowed to ask. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's steroids is tough because as an athlete, there's this notion of the short lifespan of your athletic career, mm -hmm. but also this purity to it. And when it gets questioned, you get questioned the rest of your life. Yeah, you're the truthers out there. And, I'm probably gonna take steroids once I'm done playing football. You think so? Yeah, like why not? I gotta lose a couple pounds. My heart's been working double overtime since I was like sixteen. What do you weigh right now? Well, for my strength coach is watching, I'm under. I'm under my. I'm, I have to weigh in at three ten. Let's talk about weight in the NFL for a second. Okay. I know this is your show, but I yeah, want to. You no, know, we, got, we got a subject. No, we, we talk get about weight a lot we, on my. We show. get fined every week, so every Friday we weigh in. You have to report at a certain weight. So I have to be between three hundred five and three ten. I'm three hundred eight point seven today. Okay. So I'm good. I'm ready to roll. Do you so get fined more if you weigh more? Six hundred and ninety two dollars per pound. We get fined. How'd that overweight. number come up? It's like a percentage of the salary, whatever it is. So six hundred. So if you weigh three eleven, six ninety two. If you weigh three oh four, I mean, yeah, they don't give us back any money for being under. Oh, so you don't get only fined for over, being under? Only over. Wow. Only over. So you remember we had Damon Harrison snacks yes. on the Giants. Yes. He was constantly having to like try to cut weight on like Thursday night before. So there'd just be like sauna and steam room parties, guys try all that group of guys trying to just cut I guess if you're nicknamed snacks, you know, you gotta I felt like snacks would have cut them a check for like sixteen times six ninety two and just say I might be overweight this year. Yeah, hundred percent. I think I think that happens sometimes too, because you can only cut so much weight. Yeah. You can only cut like five pounds or ten pounds of water weight, depending on how much you so weigh. So you're three oh eight point seven. Yeah. If you stopped playing I got to get to, like, 260. That's what you think you'd be? I hope in my head. Like, I have this dilute. There's two ways this is going to go. I'm not staying at 300, so I'm either getting down. I'm going to look like Chris Snee, Dave yeah, Deal. Yeah. Like, Dave Deal's, like, ripped now. Yeah. Or I'm going to be very, very heavy. And I can't you're go. Not gonna be I heavy. can't. I can't. I can't go that route. No, I don't think your body is naturally that heavy. Yeah, you're right. How, how much are you, like, having to eat to, to get up to 308.7? So I do. I actually was a little over. So when I go down the shore, I start eating Tony Bologna's pizza. Like yeah. I, I start to balloon up a little bit. Primo's hoagie. Like yeah. There's a lot of things that get me in trouble. So I actually had to drop a few pounds. I had to drop like four pounds. So I'm not eating as much. But in season, I'll do like a thousand calorie shake in the morning. And I'm doing breakfast and I'm doing lunch. You know, it's I, I forget exactly. I'd have to. I had a chef. So I did that. Damn. That one lifestyle thing. But I, I'm sure I had it for one to. year. My contract year, I got the chef. What'd you think? He was game awesome. changer. Game changer. But I can't. I couldn't. I couldn't. How much does a chef cost for a year? Seventy. Wow. But it helps you get that contract. So you think about it. Seventy for what I got. Yeah, it makes sense. But I haven't done it since. So that's another. I mean, just think about that number, everybody out there. You used to be able to write that off. You can't write that off anymore. I know, Trump. Killer. Yeah, he took away deductions and training. It's like a very a, adult we used to, podcast. We used to be able to write money. off training. Yeah. I can give you, like, you know, I can help give the real look at the NFL. Okay, so I'm a else, realist. Yeah, what else you got? I don't know. I, you I, could write I off your like, agent a little bit? Um, I, I never did. Yeah. I moved to Florida to save on state income tax. We're still going to see if that works out. Because in the NFL, you can only save money on bonus money. So I had a $10 million signing bonus. So I moved to Florida. Yeah. I thought I was coming back to the Giants. So I thought it was going to make 11-something percent. So I'm like... I'll save one point one million dollars by moving to Florida for the yeah. season. Yeah, that's that's incredible. And then I, I go to Arizona, which is four and a half percent. So right now I'm I'm trying to. They're going to audit me. I moved to Florida. Literally moved to Florida. Got a license. I have a Florida license. Do you I really? voted. I voted in Florida this past year. Signed up for a church that I know I, I go to. Yeah. And then uh, so we'll see. We're going <laughs> to see. We're going to see if uh, how that works with the with the IRS. So yeah. like so Arizona's four and a half percent. What was New York? 
New York's crazy. That's why Jeter, I don't know if you remember when Jeter got caught with the whole tax thing. I don't. Look at Leo Messi. Look at the soccer players that get caught for tax fraud. They try to claim residency in other states that have a lower tax bracket, and they got caught. So Jeter, and I think Jeter didn't win his case. So Jeter had to pay the money to the state of New York. Wow. So I'm trying to win the money from from New, from Arizona, which would be now to be like roughly like four hundred and fifty thousand. Man. On my signing bonus, you're you're in you're every where, and then you get taxed where you play. So when we play in California, I pay California state income tax for that that week. Right. So when you hate playing in California, is California worse than New York. They're both just as bad. California's the worst. Really? Western Richburg, I play with in New York, signed a bigger deal than me. And for the San, San Francisco. San Fran, he'll make less. If we play the same amount, he'll make less money just because of the taxes. And he's got eight home games. Yeah. Plus, he's got two. He's got uh, the Rams twice. Yeah. And then, man. So, Weston signed for $3 million more than me. He's signed for 48 which... I don't know what his rating is. Wait, what's, what's <laughs> Wes is my guy. He doesn't do social media, so he'll never see this. Rich bird. But I texted him right away. I said, you may have signed for more, but I'll earn more. That's incredible. He is, he's a 70 overall. So that means you beat him. You were a 72, he's a great, right? He's a very good player. He he's is a, a country, really good player. He's a country boy. Man. Well, I enjoyed having you on, as always. I know the 33%. Last time you came on, they were like, man, Pew's the fucking man. Pew's awesome. I call it like I see it. I'm, I'm, your, I'm your average guy. Yeah, you like that? I like that. I like to check out Tony Baloney's. You're okay. involved with those guys now. Yeah, guys, come on. I, I'm trying to, trying to think of the next. But I, I appreciate you kind of um, opening up a little bit about, like, the paychecks and all that stuff because – um, when I hear like a world football player, a soccer player sign a deal and they go, he's going to be getting $222,000 a week. And I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. But the fact that you guys go through, like if that's probably why the playoffs are so big for you guys too. Playoffs, you don't make anything though. You make like 25000 for so it's a wild great, card It's game. great for the guys that – you're Eli Manning. Like he's not he, – that check is but the so practice squad him, guys. It's huge for those guys. Oh, man. Huge. But – I appreciate that because it's it's a side of the NFL that we don't often get to see. And I think that we all assume, like, I thought you guys got paid 52 weeks a year. Yeah. Like, are the benefits good? Benefits are great. Benefits are 401K great. 401K is two to one. But the fact that you don't get post-career money until three years and three games. Yeah, you don't receive benefits until you get three years. That's three four games. years. Yeah. And the average lifespan's three. Yeah. And that's you have to be active for those games. So like if you're just like wow. not active for that, you're not part of the active 46 on or active 53, if you're just practice squad, practice squad guys don't get any benefits. Like you when, don't accrue a season. When did you get like a squad. growth spurt? Like were you always big? Yeah. Or was there like Yeah, a, I was always big, but I never worked out until I got to college. Really? Yeah. You weren't like lifting weights or anything. Uh, they called me Puny. Like my nickname was Puny. Damn. Yeah, it was a, like I, I did five reps at two twenty five when I got to Syracuse. So your advice then for the young people out there that maybe haven't gotten that big yet, or they just they love the game of football. Like what would you what would you say to kind of the fighters out there? Because I remember when you came out of Syracuse, you were the the good feet guy. Like what would you say to his feet are still good? Yeah, I know. But what what would you say to the guys out there that maybe aren't the Colecchio Semelis or the Zach yeah, Martins that are fucking are just, enormous? Yeah, there's a totem pole in in our game. You don't have to be at the top, but just find out where you're at on the totem pole. That's why I get in a fight every every off season. I find out where I'm at in the locker room. I find out where I'm at in that totem pole. And no matter what you're doing, you just got to find out where you're at. You got, you don't have to like your role. You just have to know your role. And that's mm. what my strength coaches told me. So just find out where you're at and just keep fighting. Like I don't care if you're the biggest, baddest man in the NFL. I'm going to find out where I stack up. If you beat me, I probably won't fight Perfect you again. Perfect place to end. Are you t- So you haven't had a fight yet this offseason? I did. I did. What? Yeah, I had a With fight. With who? In, in, in a scuffle. More was a scuffle. There was no hands thrown. Who was it? Um, we signed a D-tackle, Darius Phelan from the San Darius Diego. Darius Phelan, yeah. Yeah, from the Chargers. It got a little handsy. Yeah, we get a little handsy. But I'm the type of guy that will fight you, and then I'll sit down and have lunch with you. I don't, I'm like a, I feel like I had that like fighter mentality where like the UFC guys they'll beat the crap out of each other and then they'll have a beer Cheers after. A beer. Some what guys a, get like sensitive. What about like a Chandler Jones? No, I actually try. I, I think me and Chandler maybe tried to fight once in, in college, but Chandler's not. A, he's not a fighter. Oh, that's right. You guys went to the same school. Yeah. Uh, you have Terrell Suggs on your team now. Yeah. What if T Sizzle gets in your grill? Oof. 
I don't think I don't think it will. I don't think it'll get to that. I'm inside, so I deal with the D tackles. I don't know. But they man, get they mad at me. Lo- they get mad at me when I go out and start hitting the defensive end. I'm at left guard now, so I told Chandler I'm on your side now. You can't. There's no. I'm here. I'm gonna say like, but if you look up and like T sizzles like snarling, and they moved him inside on a pass rush in third down. I'm not worried about it. I mean, like he's an unbelievable player, but like if it has to happen and he beats me up, all right, I'm just not gonna pick a fight with him next time. I probably still will because I'm just my head. I got a hard head. I love it. You got to find out where you're at in the totem pole. Appreciate you, bro. Thirty-three percent. Hit him up on social. What do you, you do? Social. Yeah. What's your Twitter? I interact. Justin. It's just at Justin Pugh or P U G H. P U G H. Not P E W like the church pew. And then Instagram is Justin Pugh. Put also. a sixty-seven on there. Slide into his DMs. I get more. I get hit up more for the say yes to the dress than I do for football. I want to say yes to the dress with my sister. It's ridiculous. And it's all like in Brazil. I'll get like just br- like. A- Hola, Justin. Me llamo es. I love that. All right. Hit him up on social. Let him know that you appreciate him. Pew, you're the man. Uh, I wish you an incredible year of health. I hope that you guys shock the fucking league and that you're in a lot of highlights of Kyler running around the end with your hand in the air. Just going, fucking run by him, Kyler. Run, Kyler, run. Awesome. Appreciate you, brother. Holla, 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 holla. We'll be back. Uh, Coming up this Thursday, it's going to be uh, Travis Kelsey and Rob Riggle. A little Chiefs episode for you. We'll see you guys then.